Well, I see we're um, matching a game, which is funny. It's, it seems to happen quite a lot. A bit of a coincidence there. Yeah, I mean, it'd be weird. Weird if we didn't. Right? It'd be weird if we weren't matching. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like it. It's happened. It happens. It's happened a lot in the past. We yeah. turn up to things and we're wearing some very similar clothes. Yeah. So that mental connection we have. Eh? Well, some would. Some would call it something else, but yeah. Yeah. How you going? Good, good. Fantastic. Yeah. So today on the show, I have my best friend, Raj Sharma. Welcome, Raj, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Raj, is, um, we've known each other since we are five years old. We've been friends since then. We're 34 now. Yep. And so that, carry the one, that makes 20, 29 years. 29 years, <laughs> yeah. Friendship. Long time. Yeah. And, um, you know, Raj used to be a really big overweight guy and he's this was a long time ago and also you used to work a job which you hated yeah and now you're a very happy day trader yeah yeah great still a little bit heavy but you know yeah well you want a bit of you know yeah. you have a bit of bulk man need presents Could be a need presents throw people around yeah <laughs> um in this episode we're going to discuss strategies a person can use to shift their mindset from being unhappy with themselves in life to a mindset of hunger purpose and direction and we'll discuss ways a person can address their mental emotional and physical health through easy to implement routines and practices now Raj we've known each other essentially all our lives and I know that you know for years you've been a place of extremely high drive and fueled with purpose in your life you operate daily with high function and efficiency so can you start off by sharing with me what your mental mindset is each day what you're telling yourself and walk me through a typical day Okay, I mean, at the moment, a typical day for me looks like waking up about midday, which is, we'll get into, you know, that sounds like it's contrary to the main point. I get up at midday, um, I get on to what I, have to, what, what I have to do for the day, figure out the plan, and then, you know, do, do my daily routine. So, I want to eat, I want to train, and then I want to get the things that I need to do in the day out of the way, the things that are un unwork related. And then I want to be settling down at about midnight, getting into the right space and jumping on the market. So I tried the US uh, stock market. So the time zone in New Zealand is, is not great, but it means that I have to be online to meet the market open at 1.30 a.m. Local, yeah. Local, so, yeah. so local. And then I usually wrap up about 4 a.m. and then that's when I go to sleep. Right. Cool, cool. And um, so on the topic of for today, I mean, I've worked with many people who were, who were unhappy at themselves, unhappy with life, mm -hmm. and whether they're depressed or had alcohol, drug issues, uh, whatever the way you would describe these people is generally unhappy and unhealthy in some way. And have you yourself felt unhappy or unha unhealthy at some point in your life? Yeah, so about 10 years ago, I was working a job, I was in advertising, I didn't enjoy it, I didn't enjoy being told what to do, didn't enjoy, you know, the commute to and from work, like, there was a lot of aspects where, you know, I'd wake up at six, and it was very much like the same routine every, every day, but like, not something I, I enjoyed because I wasn't in control of it. So I'd wake up, go to the gym, and then be stuck at work, and, you know, it was like a salary job, so overtime wasn't compensated for and it was kind of assumed that, that you had to work a little bit extra just to get the edge over someone else in the same position. Yeah. So very much the rat race. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and would you say you're, yeah, so you're on, did you feel unhappy, you're, like in yourself? Not just because of the job, but, you know, around that type of point in life or? Yeah, I mean, I felt unhappy because I didn't have freedom. Okay. I, I didn't have the freedom to do what I wanted. I didn't have the freedom, um, to plan my day essentially it was kind of just at the helm of, of what my employers decided I need to do that day um, the workplace that I was in I didn't really enjoy like it wasn't a great culture um, I was very much hungry for for control of my own day and, and financial freedom and my outlook at that point was you know I wouldn't I wouldn't reach financial freedom until I was well into my 40s or 50s so at that point I was in my early 20s so the prospect of having to slave away for another 30 years just didn't really yeah. excite me and I guess that gave me a, a feeling of, of just n not being able to do anything like I, I couldn't 
increase my productivity or efficiency in the day that would help me get to a point of, of being free yeah any time earlier yeah. yeah yeah okay and um so commonalities i see with people that keep them in a negative cycle are things like bad nutrition little no exercise mm. these more pra- you know practical things and um, but also a negative self-talk or a negative mindset have you did you feel like you were ever trapped in like a you know just going through the same motions and like for sure yeah yeah, yeah. And is there something that helped you break free of that like you know what were you, what did you start telling yourself to get out of that so right. I, I guess yeah but about about 10 years ago like I had I had the yearning to, to find something else something else that I could do at the same time so I started looking into you know trading equities or trading options trading forex something in that sort of realm and the prospect you know seeing there's so many people that have found success in, the, in those realms and you know early financial freedom I kind of the, the prospect of achieving that excited me that gave me a, a new wind yeah a, new, a new, new sort of perspective on life and I was like well if I you know I go to my day my day job and that's just my the amount of focus and the amount of of output that I need to achieve and then anything more anything less is not really it didn't really matter so I looked at it like okay if I if I go to go to my job and do that but then I use my spare time to try and figure something else at the same time then then I you know I might be able to get to my goal faster and that perspective like that that new opportunity excited me that gave me yeah okay. gave me a drive so I was like yeah, you know yeah. I just need a so I, at that point you know, I was probably like working in the sense I had my job and I was trying to f- figure out how to make trading work. I was probably working like a solid 18 to 19 hours a day. So I don't really have, like when you're so busy and you're so just constantly trying to do something and, and especially like it's not all for someone else, it's it's for the the prospect of, of your own success. You you you're, you just kind of get in your own, your, your own drivers initiate. You, you get into these new routines, you get into these new focus realms and, and you're just trying to push forward yeah. yeah so so that was a huge drive like i guess you you know if you look at a lot of people that have a lot of free time a lot of the time they're not that driven they're not that focused they're kind of um they're happy to, to let things take longer than they should or, or push yeah. things off to the next day um so yeah that 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 changed my mind completely having to having to hustle so for about two years i was doing both jobs so at that point i was i'd wake up at about midnight I trade the market till sort of seven or eight a.m. Most of the time, losing money, and then I'd go to my day job. Like I have to be at my day job at nine, and then I'd wrap up there at sort of five or six, eat my dinner in the car, go home straight to bed, and then wake up at twelve. And that was my life for two years. So you, you when when you're doing that, you don't have you don't have time to think about like oh, I'm sad or this sucks or whatever, because you just got to do it. Like and, and that's how I I, I saw. There were many examples in the world of people that had, that had done it. So I was like, there's, there's no reason why I can't do that. So I just yeah. need to put, put the hours in and I just need to put the work in. Yeah, yeah. And I think for you, what's, what's important to know is that, you know, you just told yourself that you had to, it was something you had to do. Yeah. And that's, um, yeah, I find that's a massive thing with people who find themselves in an unhappy or unhealthy lifestyle or place in their life. Mm. That they, you know, at times I can play the victim or it's, you know everything's difficult yeah right and they're not telling themselves <clears throat> i think also another thing is that you <laughs> just to circle around is that you know you found something that excited you and having something a purpose something that you're trying to move towards yeah that's you know like a huge driver right once you have that thing that you're moving towards yeah i mean it's like momentum once you get yeah. the momentum going it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy like the effort and and, and energy that you've put into something before pushes yeah pushes you forward to, yeah. to continue yeah 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 mm. now let's talk about what you're doing at the moment in terms of routine and how your your mindset each day i want to talk about the routine and the mindset and how you know some people find things difficult to you know make themselves do something every day yeah so how do you you know you work out you're hitting the gym how many days six days a week or six seven if i can yeah yeah but definitely at least six yeah i mean how are you how are you doing that do you feel like do you feel like going every single day or? absolutely not um 
how I treat the gym now is, is not just for like the physical benefit of it, of it, but it's also the psychological benefit of it. It is my time where, you know, I've made it such a priority every day that no one can encroach on that time. So I'm not taking calls, I'm not texting, I'm, that's my hour mm. of just mental clarity and focus. And it, it becomes, you know, I get excited for it. The next, you know, the, the day before I might be thinking, what am I going to train? What's my workout going to look, look like? And that, that might be a thought process. So say I'm doing something a bit mundane or I'm like, oh, I don't really enjoy this. But I, I, I still, it's still something I can do without much thought. I'll think about what am I training the next day and, and what does that workout look like? And that excites me. That excites me doing, doing that process. And then the next day I come to the gym ready. I know what I'm going to do. And again, it's almost like going not into autopilot, but going into, okay, I've got to do five exercises, four sets, going through. I can think about other things in the back of my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what I like about that is it's, you know, you've made it something that you must do. And that's a really important thing for people. If you, that I think for people, if you find something, you know, if you want something to change in your life, Mm. and you know it's important to you, you need to prioritize it. Yeah. And, you know, if you go look at your day and write down, look how you spend your time each day. Sure. If, you, if people write down how they spend their time each day and they see what, you know, the majority of their time is spent doing, it could be, for some people, maybe scrolling on their phone or watching TV shows and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. You've got to look at what is a priority in your life. And maybe you don't know what that is yet, but you, that's, another, that's another thing all at once um, itself. But by prioritizing things, you make something like the gym a must do. Mm. It's something you must do every day. And that's yeah. what you're doing. And that's what I do. And, you know, nothing will get in the way of that. And if that's a must do for you every day, then it just happens. It's right? just, yeah, it's just it's it's like intrinsically in your, it's like part of your day. People who brush their teeth twice a day. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's just something I do. Yeah, right. I know I needed. I should do it, so I do it. Yeah, and that's what it's like for the gym, for us. We just know we need to do it, and we do it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I like what you said about you know psychologically. For me, it's like that. It's like going to the gym. For me, I um, it's like meditation. Yeah, and that might sound strange while you're lifting weights, but it's a centering exercise for me. I'm in a meditative state for my whole workout. Mm. There's not much thought going on unless I want the thought to come in and explore the thought, but otherwise I'm just, it's, you're in like hyper-focused. You're in the matrix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's also, there's also like a sense of achievement. So, I mean, if you look at your day and there might be things you have to do, like, so maybe it's brush your teeth, make your bed, go to the gym right by the time like, like for those three examples to so say you wake up you brush your teeth you make your bed and then you go to the gym you can you could achieve that all in the first two hours and then at the end of the two hours you can be like well i've achieved not brushing your teeth is the hardest thing but like i've, I've achieved the workout and that might be the, the physically the hardest thing you have to do mm. all day right like and then from there it's almost like you know it's just it's easy you know yeah yeah kind of cruiser. you've gone yeah, through yeah. the hardest part of your day it's done it's achieved yeah i think i'd say for a lot of people it's go you know they the rest of the day maybe work. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because sure. you're nocturnal, so it's yeah. around the other way. But yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so on the other part of it is nutrition. I want to talk about how, it seems, you know, what you eat is how you feel. And if you're unhappy and un unhealthy, you can get into that cycle of feeding yourself. And keep, like feeding, feeding that cycle. Of course, yeah. If you're eating... Foods which are, you know, bad for you, like fast food or unhealthy foods or processed, you know, a lot of processed foods that, um, you know, you're, in your gut, there's a lot of, 95% of your serotonin receptors are in your gut. And that affects, that is a you know, mood neurochemical. Yeah. So what you're eating can affect your mood. Um, tell me a little bit about you, how you used to eat. So, yeah, in my teenage years, I was obviously probably morbidly obese, um, but how I would seek gratification was from tasty food mm. you know like i'd be having a hard morning but you know a nice chicken pie would level me out you know i'd be like oh, okay i feel good again and then the high if that would drop off and maybe by dinner i'm like mm, maybe i'll have a little bit more ex extra gravy or a little bit a little bit of dessert afterwards yeah. and i'll be like mm, yeah i'm like i'm content yeah, and, and and yeah I, I guess for me my battle with food was trying to disconnect contentment or happiness 
away from food. So move it to other things, and the gym definitely helped. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, you, you, you get the, the little the dopamine and serotonin boost after a workout. Yeah, we well, get the endorphins. You get the endorphins, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You, and you get this natural yeah. ha- happiness that. Oh yeah. Kind of, uh, you know, it satiates satiates you for the rest of the day. You get that from the workout. You you move away from food, and I, I guess for a lot of other people, especially now, may, maybe they're getting that that gratification from vaping or smoking mm. or you know people that go go you know part of their their daily routines go to the pub every day. They're getting that from the high of having a drink and you know talking talking shit to yeah. the punters there. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess it's it's moving moving the, gratif- the gratification that everyone needs. Like at the end of the day, everyone needs like a little bit of a an oomph in their day. But moving that away from things that have a negative effect on your health to to something that is positive. So whether that's I mean for me and you, it's it's going to the gym. Um, for my partner, she's discovered Pilates recently, and that that gives her before she she had before she was doing that regularly, she almost like couldn't fathom how I felt after after a workout. She couldn't fathom why I'd want to go every day. Yeah, and yeah, you know, I could never explain that to anyone. You can't like I mean I'm trying right now. But you, could, <laughs> you can never like fully explain that feeling to someone like after doing it consistently. And now she's found it and she's like, I, I get it. Like, yeah, yeah. You just feel it's just it's so just, different. You just yeah. feel so much better. And I'm sure if, if I was like, can you explain it to me? She'd be like, I can't, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's just, yeah. So she found Pilates. Eh? That's good. Yeah. And that's a good point. Like, you know, the gym isn't for everyone. Mm. You've got so many options and you've got free options. Oh, like going go for a like run. fast walk or a run. Yeah. You know, just moving your body. Yeah. Let's touch on, um, you know, with exercise and nutrition. It's a good time to touch on routines because mm-hmm. we know how powerful routines are. And we're humans are creatures of habit. It's a cheat code for life. And yeah, exactly. If you are stuck in this negative cycle, mm-hmm. you know, unhappy, unhealthy, starting to implement a routine in your day to day life is what can help pull you out of that. And just, just by doing gradual little things, build the momentum. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, tell me. Tell me what routines do for your day. So routines for me do two things. So, well, three things actually. So the first thing is they help me maintain consistency in my life. So yes. if I have a routine, I'm doing doing the same thing that I want to achieve in, in the day. So whether that's going for a workout or reading or something like that, I do that every day. It becomes, it creates its own momentum. Second thing is it gives me a good grounding because I now have once I'm past past these routines like I now have a set uh, amount of achievement that I've already done in the day without really having, having to think about it and the third is it it um, it means that like I, I can I can I can focus within these within these routines and think about other things because I'm, I'm essentially on autopilot that's yeah. what I love. Yeah. 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 Well said. Yeah. Having that consistency just builds your momentum mm-hmm. and things become easier, right? Yeah. It's, it just does it itself. And then the autopilot. I love autopilot. I mean, autopilot's great. That's like, um, you know, there's some of the hypnotherapy and NLP work I do with people is helping make conscious functions run un- in the subconscious. Mm. So you have essentially free up more mental space. Yeah. Right? So you're, you know, you can be work, like, you know, working out or, you know, doing tasks and also doing something else mm. mentally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the efficiencies. It's fantastic. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, going on the top of efficiency, if you, if you think about... If you, have a, if you have a set amount of things to do in your day and, and you've got to do it every day and you keep doing it, eventually you go into a state of auto, auto, autopilot. But by the nature of humans, like we try and find ways to do things easier or in a lazier manner, yeah. or, or a more efficient manner. So, by naturally doing things in routines, you you will have the benefit of identifying efficiencies in your day. Yeah, yeah. Because because you now have the time to think. Like, oh well, you know, maybe instead of maybe instead of I don't know. Say you're trying to read, you're trying to read a book in a month or something. Instead of reading. After the gym, maybe you identify an efficiency like, okay, I need to eat food, and then I, I now have 45 minutes to an hour of dead time. Maybe I read in that time. Yeah. Because you need your food to digest. Yeah. For those yeah. that don't know. Um, yeah, so, so you, you, you find efficiencies in your day. You ident- the only way you're going to identify them is by continuously doing them every day, aka a routine. And yeah. Yeah. Nice. Now, 
Let's touch on the mindset. Um, trying to, you know, thinking back to a place where, you know, you might have found things a bit more difficult to get started. Sure. So, you know, I want to try to, re you know, relate to people who are having difficulty. They have that, you know, quite a negative self-talk. You know, a lot of, you know, we've all been there before. Where you tell yourself something's going to be too hard or there's no point or it's not worth it. Yeah. What's, how do you, what do you find your mindset is generally? What do you, when you come up with a challenge or yeah. an obstacle, how do you approach that? How do you interpret it? If something doesn't go Raj's way. If something doesn't go Raj's way. Well, I mean, you have to, <laughs> you have to break it down. So, for example, I'm not saying this for everyone, say someone's trying to get in the habit of going for a run every day. Okay. So mm. they're trying to get into the habit of that and they're like, oh, it's daunting. It's like daunting. And you're like, why is it daunting? Like what, what makes it daunting? Is it the thought of people seeing you run and that makes you uncomfortable? Is it the thought of, oh, I need to like find enough time for me to go for a run and then come back and have a shower and get ready. Is that yeah. daunting? Like what, what, what makes it daunting? Is it just the effort that you have to you know, use to, to do it? So try and, try and break it down like that. Figure out what makes things daunting. And then from there, address said topics, you know. Mm. Someone, oh, I'm worried people are going to see me. And no one cares. You're not, you're not going <laughs> to, they're not going to remember it, you know. It's like a fleeting second, even if they are looking. And you're probably never going to see them again. You know, like, who cares? You know, you, you, oh, you know I've got to have a shower and stuff. Okay, do it, do it first thing in the morning. And then figure, figure out a way to, to make it easier on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. I mean, I, mean I, I still think the easiest, most people that find things daunting, like if, if they're trying to create a routine around fitness or, or consistency, the reason they find it daunting is because they haven't organised their day. They haven't planned out their day yet. They haven't figured out the structure of, mm. of, of, of how their day could work to incorporate said activity yeah. or, or routine. So a lot, a lot of the time I think if you actually just take a second and like think how your day could be structured in a more efficient or better way to incorporate said thing, then you'll find that it's actually really easy to fit it in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, time management's a huge thing. I think people, you know, lots of people mismanage their time and then, then, they, and they, then they feel like they don't actually have much time, but yeah. really it's a mismanagement of it. Well, you break down your day. like Yeah, but I understand, you know, there are people who, you know, may, are maybe working two or three jobs or something that are yeah. very time poor. But there are also people who think they're time poor. Yeah, and exactly. they're not really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Efficient. They need to develop more efficiencies. I mean, at the end of the day, there's always someone that's busier than you. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. And, any yeah, and they're finding ways to do. And things. they're finding ways to do things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah with the mindset, um, I like. What works for me is telling, asking myself, is you know, how is this getting me closer to where I want to be in life? Okay, so, and, so, you, so you're breaking down the pro, like how that progress well, will incrementally help you achieve. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And also it's like, you know, prioritizing. Like if I feel, like if I go, sometimes I might catch myself going to waste time. Like going to do people completely. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like going to like, like I might feel like I might sit down and watch Netflix or something. Yeah. Like, and maybe if I do need a little bit of a mental break, I'll go do that for five or ten minutes. But then I'll be like, mm, I feel like I've reached the point where if I do this any longer, it's... You know, it's not, I don't need it anymore. I don't need to rest anymore. Yeah. Is this helping me? And, you know, you catch yourself and you're like, ah, oh, this isn't helping me anymore. It's not taking me closer in, in your to my opinion, goal. to say like, because like, you know, there's a lot of people that find having a moment, like watching Netflix or scrolling Instagram, right? Yes, those are not like healthy habits as a whole, but maybe for some people, yeah, having five or 10 minutes here and there doing that, do you find, would you find for those kind of people like, like a benefit in saying, okay, I, I can only, I can only do 10 or 15 minutes and yeah. like capping it. Well, that's like a discipline thing for, for people, right. discipline okay. thing. Because I mean, you start scrolling on some of those, on some of that shit yeah. and you don't know how long it's been. That's like, it, you yeah. Time will just go. That's what they want. So, and I mean, yeah, I mean, I think there's healthier ways. I'm not a fan of the, you know, just aimlessly going through social sure. media. Yeah. Um, but for me, I do enjoy just relaxing and watching something. Yeah. But I think if you're going to do it that way, you need, do need to be quite disciplined. Sure. Like, and, and have your sh shit together a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if you're, you know, if you're someone who can plonk down and 
go on a binge of two, three, four hours or something, maybe it's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe you need to be finding something more. Those people, yeah. Like, yeah, re- like reading or listening to an audio book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now, <clears throat> another thing is reflection. Yeah. So, and what I mean by that is, like, how you can reassure yourself that you're, you know, tr- I guess it's like patting yourself on the back. Tell me about how you, you know, you, you do reflection on, to yeah. know that you're actually progressing, to getting where you want to go, right? Like saying, hey, fuck, look, this is what I've accomplished today. And yeah. it's really, you know, good on you. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, a main aspect of what I do for work is measuring what works and what doesn't and the easiest way to do that is to journal so I journal uh, for work every every day I, I write down what trades I got into why I got into them where I got out why I got out and I mean there's two two fold benefits there the first is obviously you're tracking you're, you're finding you're identifying efficiencies within your own patterns so you're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't and then trying to obviously cull away the things that don't work and increase the things that do work but then there's also the second benefit of it's very you know when you lose when you're wrong it's very emotionally trying and and as humans like that's we're designed to to when we, when we stuff things up or, or, or things don't go away we're designed to like almost punish ourselves we're like mm. oh like, why'd you do that you idiot and and that's that negative, it can be very critical yeah yeah so that negative self-talk and and sometimes it's hard to decipher you know like a small sort of slip up or a mistake from being critical to, to the bigger picture and so yeah a benef- benefit I found with journaling is you know you're writing down all, all your all your losses but you're writing down all your successes as well so when you have a loss or you have a spate of losses it's very easy for your mind to play a trick on you and be like you suck don't do this what are you doing you're wasting your time you know everything everyone said about what you're doing is right Maybe you know you're just an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. But then, if you've got it all down, you've got you've got everything written in your own words by you every day, and you just go back a couple of pages and you and you read like okay, like I did great here, I did great here, I did yeah, right yeah. thing here, I got out the right time. Then you're like, oh well, this is only like an issue because I did these two or three things. I just let's just address that rather than life as a whole and yeah yeah maybe i do suck i don't think it is that you know it's probably <laughs> just these three things that you did wrong for maybe two or three seconds per thing yeah. and you just near near address that and, and i think although i don't require that for the for the rest of my life maybe if you are in a place where you're not you feel like you're not you're not moving in the right direction um and it's all getting a bit too much and you're evaluating your your, your progress as a whole and you're i'm not doing anything right at all maybe journaling is for you because you can identify and be like, well, I'm doing 90% of the things right, but that 10% is having a detrimental effect on the rest of it. And maybe I just need to identify what that 10% is, minimize it or color it altogether. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think there's probably some people out there thinking, fuck, I'm only doing 10% right. <laughs> and, and, but, but, but are you? If, uh, but you, that's why I think how the, can you not? the journaling and reflecting is really valuable because at the end of the day, you look back at what you've done and... You know, you look at your accomplishments, no matter how small they are, mm. and it's like there's your momentum. It's building, it's building, and you don't have to be critical of what you didn't achieve. But it's like a little, a little goal for the next day. It's like, hey, let's see if I can just do a little bit more. Let's see if I can, you know, exercise for fifteen minutes instead of ten minutes. You yeah. know, it, yeah. yeah, I think it's a good way to just get out of your head as well put it down and you can yeah. go and reflect and then you know be able to flick back like you said flick back and look at your progress like look at yeah uh, like, like where you've you have come from if yeah. you try and switch around like it's very easy for us to have negative self-talk and identify the losses like mm. immediately your mind can mm. do that to you you know it can quickly identify where you've slipped up how you've embarrassed yourself how you've done the wrong things and it forgets all the positive things it does yeah. so when you journal it's almost like a, a little cheat code that you can you can play this trick in your mind and be like, oh, actually, yeah, I did this really good and I did that really good and those are my wins. So I'm instead of building the momentum on everything that my mind's telling me I did it wrong, I'm going to build my men- momentum on the wins that I have yeah. here. Yeah. And and then from there you can go forward. And, and, and I think another another really like important cheat code that you have is is training your mind to you know if it's got something bad to say, shut up. Yeah, and, and that, that negative self-talk, learning how to just 
dial it down, turn yeah. it down. Yeah, uh, and even I mean, I I have I used to do this. I haven't done it for a long time, but when you have these these feelings of like, I really stuffed up. I really want to just stop. I I can't do this. Identify these these negative traits, and then you know, write in your journal as if you're writing to a friend, like as if you didn't do the stuff, stuff ups, as if your mate did it, and you're just like, you know, you stuffed up here and here, here. Definitely, you, you really screwed those up, but you've done really well here, and let's just focus on that. Let's move forward on that. What's done is done. Yeah. You can't do anything about it. Move forward and, and try and go on a positive tra- 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 trajectory. Trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Learn and adapt. Right. Yeah. 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 Great, great. I think I just want to start to tie it up. Okay. And um, so, for, you know, for a person who's, I mean, we've, you know, for people who are unhealthy or unhappy, it's about making those changes in these era, in these areas of life mm. we talked about, where it's nutrition, exercise, starting to implement routine. Yeah. And becoming efficient. And it all might sound like a lot, but it's just picking one, I think picking one, depending on what, you know, what level you're at, just picking one aspect, um, you know, making a small goal that's achievable. Yeah. And yeah, but looking at these areas of life, nutrition, your exercise, routines and efficiencies. Yeah. And um, your mindset, how you're speaking to yourself, the internal voice, just d- trying to dial back the negative self-talk and ramp up the positivity. Count your wins. Count your wins. And, yeah. you, know, you know, at the end of the day, you have a whole lifetime to figure this out and then reap the rewards. So like there was a, I had a close friend in trading and he used to always tell me like when I got worked up, he'd be like, you only have to get rich once, right? And that, that works for everything. Cause like once you figure out how to do it, you can continue doing it. So just like with fitness, you only have to get healthy once and then you've figured out how to do it. You just got to keep doing it. Yeah. You got to keep doing it. You only got to figure out how to get a girlfriend once and then you can not say stay with that same girl if she's toxic but I'm saying you figured <laughs> out how to talk to girls you figured out how to approach you figured out how to cultivate a relationship so instead of looking at it as like this overwhelming task you gotta pick a pick a direction pick an end goal and be like okay, well I just gotta figure out how to do that once yeah. and then I've already figured out how to do it I can keep doing it yeah and just learn better ways yeah as you go along to keep <laughs> being better at well it. yeah you figure out how to do it once and then you figure out how to make it better and easier on yourself and you just keep doing it yeah yeah nice I like it. Mm. All right. That's a great place to wrap it up. I want to thank you, Raj, for joining me today. I appreciate the time you've taken to talk to me. And to everyone who's listening and watching, uh, your time and attention is appreciated and not taken for granted. And to you all, hasta luego. Hasta luego. (laughs) That brings us to the end. I want to thank everyone for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it or check out my website www.hewlich.life Please join me for my next episode.